Well, hi, thanks for joining me in my shop here. Hey, I've been doing something a little bit unusual here. I've been working away without the cameras running, trying to replace the two capacitors that I spotted right at the end of the last video. And I got them replaced in there. Here they are, the ones that came out. Look, I had to rip the ends off them. These just, this has been an ugly, ugly affair here. So I'm just as, just as well I didn't video it, in fact. Um, but I turned the cameras on because right at the last minute, just when I'm just getting ready now to try this out, uh, after fiddling with it, it took me about an hour to do those two capacitors. I ended up accidentally cutting one of the leads to the uh, um, cathode resistor, so I've gone ahead and replaced it. So that's a 47, and I've stuck a 55 water in there. And the last thing I was doing was just making sure that there were no accidental contacts with the wires in there. I grabbed onto a component. And then after what happened, I decided I better turn on the camera here. So here's the area of work. There's the big white 50 ohm capacitor there. And back in here, all the wires I've been fiddling around with, uh, trying to make sure everything is connected to the right thing. You can see my two new capacitors down under there. But if you look down a little further, like under this resistor, mind if you'll see a component, there it is. Does it look smashed? You know what, I just, just before I turn the camera on, this is why I turned the camera on, I grabbed that with my pair of pliers to tug it. I wanted to tug it because it looked to me like it was in contact with the chassis. It probably wasn't. But as soon as I squeezed with my pliers, that's what happened. This is not good. So i got to figure out what that is. Uh, it looks like a resistor for sure with carbon a carbon thing inside it there. So it's going over to... Oh, I didn't want this to happen. I was so close to uh, turning on the radio and continuing with it. So it's going to this terminal here it's got a uh, looks like a 10k no it's not connected to it is it this is so tight down here let me try that again so I've moved all these parts around I me mean, this got really brutal removing those two capacitors look at that I probably introduced a short right there Okay, so but that that busted capacitor is actually connected to this terminal with the wire on it here. Whoops, didn't even point to it. Okay, that one I'm pointing at. This other wire. I think I had it in the pliers and I jammed it inside there. Let's see if I can just get a, a poke on it here. I'm trying to do this by by looking at the result in the in my TV. This is not good at all. Let me do it directly here. Let's see what else I can wreck. any harder yeah so it looks like that wire is just tied to the terminal right there beside the component that I've smashed okay and uh, it's so easy to make a mistake at this point oh great okay that makes it easy so it's pin number seven pin number seven what is on pin number seven of the that's the uh, 6AL5 let's go take a look here in number 7 of the 6AL5 so there's the electrolytic one I replaced earlier that's got to be it ceramic 470 
got to cut that out. You mean there's no other capacitor around here it could be. It has to be that one. 470. Pico Ferret. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Not so happy with the situation. I'm kind of like out of the out of the pan into the fire here. It's even going to be harder to work on that. It's even deeper in the radio. Huh? But that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get a ceramic 470 Pico and I'm going to stick it in there. I'm going to save you the pain. Uh, with the video off, I can I can say dirty words too. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. What happened to that nice little this one here? There we are. No, I think that's the plug-in from. Uh, yeah, that, that's come out of one of the other tubular capacitors. Where's the rest of this one? Well. Seems to have, uh, oh, here it is right here. I think. Yeah. Somehow that's a capacitor. Can't say I've ever broken one of these apart. supposed to be, uh, you know, there should be two plates somehow construed inside this thing. Interesting. I'll have to smash open a bunch more of these uh, old capacitors and look inside. I'm a little curious about what that actually is. Okay, but what I'm really curious about at this point is, is the radio going to work? Is it going to work the way it did? Or am I into a whole new world of pain here? So, let me get it ready. I'll get it all set up here ready to go. Okay, so I think I've prepared myself for a degree of panic here when I turn this on. Uh, I've made too many too many things happen <laughs> down here for me to feel absolutely reassured. I've inspected everything, everything looks good. That doesn't necessarily mean anything in the end. It could still be something has happened in there that I haven't spotted or maybe I broke another component and don't know it. So, so we're going to start this up on restricted power. And in my eyes, I think I'm going to stick yours up there too. Keep an eye on these lights. If they come on bright, stay bright, bad news. Um, I have the volume turned down. I have the speaker connected here so we can hear what's going to come out to start with. So this instrument won't work. Scope won't work initially. We should hear the output from the signal simulator. I'm reviewing this for my own sake, by the way. I'm not. Uh, I want to make sure my head is clear on this. Uh, we'll apply restricted power. Watch the lights. Things look okay. We'll put full power on, and uh, hopefully, we'll be hearing the tone coming out of the radio. Uh, now I do have the AVC uh, voltmeter connected here. So that, that may respond too. Okay, I think we're ready. So, eyes on the lights. Here we go. Now, that's the same thing it's always done. Very good. Okay, we'll put it on full power here. Right, those lights can go out and then, of course, there's no power going through them anymore. Okay, we should be listening to the speaker. Hey, hey. Excellent. So this has come up to 6.8, exactly where it was before. That's good. Tone sounds good. But anyway, that's good enough to see that this is a beautiful sine wave. Sounds good, looks good. Okay, I think we're back in business. So what I'm going to do is reconnect this meter here. We'll take the speaker off. Okay, so that connects these resistors, which replace the, uh, <laughs> they're warm, but they're warm because of this. This is a vacuum tube voltmeter here. 
and it can't it just can't be warm from the output of this amplifier that, that would that would be pretty stunning if that were the case so where, where's our voltage where's the voltage We are running this thing with three volts out, but maybe I just have the volume turned down so low. Let me just turn it up. Yeah, that's all it is. Okay, so of course I'm blowing it off the screen here. Come on, trigger on that thing, would you? That's still not triggering properly. Okay, we're back in business. I'm right back to where I was. This has come down to 6.5 over here, which is okay, I think. This guy's running right around 3. We just adjust them to 3. And I go back after more capacitors. Only we'll the rest of them. See, there's two here. There's one tucked over there. The rest of them are really easy. Oh, there's one right here. Easy peasy. Great. Okay. So let me let me just make sure this is right on three now. You know what I gotta do? I gotta check the tuning of this radio. So let's put this on three. See if the tuning is varied at all. No. Peak comes in the same place. Three, now we're down to five here. Oh, did I just do that with tuning here? No, it's gone down to five. Why? Why? Why is it? Why is it? Why is it drifting down like that? Okay, it's just slowly drifting downwards. doing fine. So is that to say there still is a component in there doing this? Uh, okay, hang on a second here. Just getting the camera set up so I don't have to hold it. Okay, I'm going to tune the radio now. the peak AVC. So, you know, I can only say I saw a drift. The audio levels dropped a little bit too. Hey, what about a little freezy spray? <laughs> okay, yeah, I had great luck with this last time. Why not try it again? So I'm going to freeze the paper capacitors that are left in the set here just to see if anything happens. Here goes the first one. Let me get a little more. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Hey, it went up a little bit. That's this one down here. down further. Okay, now here's another. I got two at once here. Here we go. These are in the audio circuits. Can't say I saw anything happen there. The last one is right on the volume control. I am pretty surprised that this does anything, but let's give it a try. I don't see anything there. Let's go back to this one that seemed to show an effect. Here we go. And it really froze it down. I wouldn't say anything happened that time. Try up here. 
Please be consistent. Somebody, anybody. I saw a small variation there, but I was actually spraying it. Some of the cold would have got on the actual coil here that's so close, so I'm pretty sure that's a... Uh, Okay, now I'm just going to do a general haphazard spray because wow, did I ever pay off last time I did that? Okay, saw a little bit happen there, but there's coils and all kinds of stuff in here that I'm spraying on. I mean, I, I'm just totally shocked if this suddenly. And I'm just spraying around. I'll show you what I'm doing here. 3.4 is where we're at. Hey, I'm just doing this. That's all. Just spraying around. Because it's fun to do. I don't want to spray any glass, any uh, vacuum tubes here. Oop. I don't see anything happening now. Whoa, what? I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. That's my usual freezy spray experience. Well, we did hit the one capacitor. It did seem to do something. Let me mechanically... Uh, I'm going to wiggle that capacitor and then grab it with a pair of pliers. And hopefully it won't shatter. It's a wax one anyway. And I'm now applying mechanical force to it. I see nothing happening. Get an idea of what I'm up to here. That's what I'm doing. Oh, geez, you stuck on the wax. <laughs> I couldn't get my pliers out of there. Okay, well, clearly the the what's left to do here is change change uh, these capacitors and. Uh, after that, it's time to give the radio a really good test. I'm going to do this one and then we'll test it again. The one that seemed to react to the cold spray. Okay, I think I'm ready now. I've replaced the one capacitor. Uh, wow. I crushed it a little bit with my pliers when I was uh, working with it. So it's pretty tough not to crush these things. And I've smashed the end, so I don't think it's worth testing. It's almost certainly to test the same as you know, within the range of the other ones I've tested, which would all be a little bit leaky to moderately leaky. That's kind of where they're at. Um, okay, let's power this guy up. I think I'll do it on the lights just to be sure. Can't imagine there's a problem there. There's no problem. There we go. Now we're not on the speaker this time. I left everything set in the same way, so we should see the same kind of rise in voltages. Here we go. Going up. Going up. Okay, the audio one is up to 2.5. Slowly rising. This one's going up to what's that? 5. And now it's starting to fall. The okay, radio could still be in the warm-up stage. Okay, so we'll just kind of leave that running there. We'll take a look at a few other things. So this is dropped down to two now instead of three. Um, I'm not sure what to make of that. That's a little bit unexpected. Let me just show you which capacitor it is that we just uh, we just changed. Okay, so if we look on the schematic over here is the six AL five right there. So that's the one I just changed. And it's on the plate circuit of this amplifier here. So if this were seriously leaky, it would pull current through this 1K. That's a small resistor, the 1K. Causing a little bit of a voltage drop, a little bit of a drop. This 105. Oh, I measured this high last time, didn't I? 
why don't we take a measurement of this voltage here? It's right on the high end of this capacitor, more or less. The one I just did. Now, let's take a look. Uh, let's take a look. One oh five on the uh put this put them there. One oh five on the capacitor. One side is grounded. Here's the other side. Whoa! One forty two. Hey, it's better than ever. Wow, that's that's way above where it's supposed to be. I don't know if that qualifies as a really bad sign. I don't know. I don't know what to think of that. Let's look at the next. Let's not. I don't want to stick my voltmeter leads in there among all those parts. Well, all we got left now are these two kind of funny looking, extra waxy, slightly different looking capacitors here. Um, the one is the capacitor, they're both, I think, well one anyway, one is involved with the volume control. So it you know, could affect that. Hey, this has gone up a bit. What happened there? Who's, uh, who's responsible? bad connections up here. Okay, let me turn it up to three. Not very far. Could be dirt in the volume control that caused that change. So that's at three. This is hanging in at, uh, at five here. I think it's a little bit better now. Now you know what? Look at it. It's slowly drifting downwards. Slowly, slowly. Yeah, it's not so slow. Huh. What is causing that? Okay. So I've got that capacitor in. Hey, I've got the other one ready to test. Yeah. This is the one I just took out. And this guy, while we're gonna get the radio warming up here. Okay. Um, let's take a look at the which one did I just do? So we're on the volume control. And I just did a There it is. I just did this one here. So this one comes out from the ground, or, or it's grounded at one end, capacitor or resistor, and then it goes into the back side of this volume control. So I think this is basically the loudness compensation. So when you turn the volume down, somehow the bass and, bass and trouble or, or something is peaked a little more. The audio uh, balance changes a little bit. Balance not a good word to use. The tonal balance changes a bit. Okay, that's what we did. Now, what about what happened? Yay, 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 yay. Okay, so on the first of all, quick. On this meter. Wow, we're back up to six point eight again. Really? I, I, I can't imagine how that capacitor would do this. It's coming down so slowly. 6.8 now. Keep an eye on that. Would it just start dropping? That's my imagination. But the thing I'm noticing is look where this is. 
This is down to one volt. Uh, this isn't zero down here on this meter, by the way. There's, 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 there's no zero. <laughs> can I put it? You can see on the scope, the signal is lower too. Looks like a nice sine wave. I can see it. But lower. Okay, we'll turn up the volume here. Back up to three. So that, that really cut back the volume. I'm not saying that's a problem. Perhaps that's exactly what it should be doing. Maybe this is now uh, working more correctly. Get a look at the scope there. Nice signal there. Now, for those of you who are really into FM, um, we're looking at the uh, detected signal coming out of the FM discriminator on the scope there and uh, I've got the simulator running around 50 kilohertz of swing in the input signal. So the input signal is 100 megahertz, it's swinging back and forth 50 kilohertz right now. Let me just vary that a bit and reduce it. Right, you can see the audio appears to have gone down, which it has. And if I increase it, 75, this is the max that radios are built for. 75 uh, kilohertz swing in the FM signal. But I've had it running right around here, so now we're back on 3 again. Okay, hey, this all looks good. Um, peek back at the ABC meter, which Still slowly drifting down. And the only two capacitors I've got left to change, what are they connected to? So one, one, so I know what they are. Let's go on the schematic here. Take a look. So what's left now is uh, this one here, uh, 005 on the volume control here. And the other one um, is connected to pin 7, pin 7 of a tube. <laughs> Which tube? Pin 7 of the, of the, of the, of the, which, which, which tube is that? Pin 7, oops, pin 7 of the 6AV6, I believe. That's what that would be. 7 of the 6AV6. 6AV6 is a AM only tube. Pretty sure. AM detector tube and first audio amplifier. And that would be this capacitor, 0.01. So we have 0.05 and a 0.01. So, um, I do these in some kind of order. So one on top of the other. Uh, well, I'll decide what order to do them in. I will do them in that order. And we'll see where we're at. And this thing is still very slowly sinking. That's what I think. Oh. Maybe not. You know, it could be a vacuum tube doing this quite easily. Who knows at this point? Okay, let me go after one of those next. Okay, so I almost forgot to test the last uh, capacitor, which I have ready to go here. So let's take a look at the capacitor checker and we'll give it a go. Okay, so we're on the 25 volt test spot. There we go. Ooh, that almost looks like it's not even connected. Oops. ways to be fooled when you're doing this kind of work. Let's try it again. That, that really looks like it's not connected. Okay, I don't know. One more time. Uh, 
let's go up in voltage, 150. You know, th this is a... Oh, 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 what happened there? I think you're hearing some loud staticky sounds on the video uh, being picked up uh, electrostatically or inductively with the microphones and that. I can hear it coming out of my radio speaker beside me here. I'm not sure what that means. Let me turn this back down. You know, it's possible the leads are broken inside this capacitor. And it's quite possible I'm the one who broke them. I mean, you've seen the uh, condition of a couple others I got out of the radio. I, I really was rugged. It wasn't so rugged on this one. But, uh, wow, I don't think that was a very valid test. Now, I happen to have another one already cut out. Why don't we test it right away? 0.01. This is one of the two I was aiming for, the two last ones. Come on here. Look at how waxy this one is. See, these, these next two, this one and the next one I'm going to take out, they look a little different than the other ones. And in fact, they're made by a different company. I think that says uh, TCC, I think. And the other ones were uh, Aerovox. Right at the top there, right at the top, arrow box. These ones, whatever wax they used on these, was held in way better. So I'm really interested to see if these test better. Okay, so we're going to run the 25 scale, give her a shot. Okay, so that looks like it should. Try it again. So you can see the charge, the char as the capacitor is charging, the eye closes, and then it opens up as the charge is completed. And if there's any leakage, it can't open all the way. This one's showing zero leakage, 150 volt. Wow, not so good at 150, is it? It looks really good at 25. So again, you know, it's showing signs of deterioration, just like the others. Even though it's got this lovely wax on it. Okay. I can't let it read in here. So I'm going to put in a new one. Well, I think that's a good idea. I put in a new one there. Um, let's give the radio a test here. All set. Everything's good. Here we go. to get up to 6.8 or so initially. Okay, so 6.5 and starting on its way down, I think. Other indications? Just under 3 here, and I think that's just as good as it was. Signal looks fine. It's just There we go. Nice sine wave. Okay, no surprises here. Let's go back and just look at that ABC meter again. Looks like it's holding pretty steady there. Is there some way the capacitor I just changed could leak down the ABC voltage? I can't imagine that. Just because I can't imagine it, that means I should take a look. So I can't I can't imagine it because this is all involved in the audio circuit through the triode all the way down here. The ABC is a long ways away. It's the FM side. It's I can't imagine it's related to that capacitor. But we are seeing what we're seeing. I think it is slowly drifting down. 
So the, the effect of the drifting uh, AVC effect on the radio, because it's drifting downwards, means the radio will get louder. My interpretation, unless the change isn't really a problem with the AVC, it's actually something else in the radio that's changing the signal strength going into the detector. I mean, that's very, very likely too. But it's not going all the way down to three like it was. Okay. Lots of interesting observations. May not be adding up to much, really. One more capacitor to go. It's a late morning in my shop, and I want to get this uh, last capacitor out of there. So, last capacitor. Your your end your end has come. You're going into retirement now. Okay, time to test this last one. There it is. Up. 0.01. 25 volts. Watch in the eye. Not as good as the last one. If I put it to 150, I bet you it won't open. So actually, these heavily waxed, nicer looking guys, just as bad as the rest. You know, I have taken capacitors, other radios, look just like this, and had every one of them test good. I spent a lot of time replacing a bunch of good capacitors to no effect. So that's why I'm doing all this uh, legwork here. I'm trying to teach myself what the truth is about capacitors. And now the truth is I've replaced all the paper capacitors in here. Have I, have I missed one? Have I missed one in here? Enter is a resounding no. I have not missed any. There are no more paper capacitors. Wasn't there one up on the top here? Oh, there is one up here. Okay, one more. <laughs> but before I do that, because I'm going to have to disturb the radio a fair bit, let's let's give them a let's give them a go. And that, that top one, I believe, is just the tone capacitor. I'm not sure it can have any. Well, I don't know. I'd have to look at the schematic before I say something kind of brainless. Okay, switch them on. Switch them on. Switch them on. Get your cameras ready. Everybody, get your cameras ready. There we go. Here comes Mr. ABC. hear that 400 hertz tone in here. Something something is reproducing it somewhere. 6.2 this time. 6.2 looking rather rock solid. Uh, touch under 3. And again a nice sine wave. No surprises here. Wouldn't, wouldn't really expect anything dramatic to take place here. Let it run for just a moment. And we'll take a look at the AVC. Maybe while we're letting it run, let's take a look at the schematic while we're letting it run here. One last peek there. Hey, okay. solid 6.2. So we're left with just one more on the on the other side of the radio. And we're done. Fantastic. Uh, that covered wire is actually coming from that capacitor right there. So that's the one I'm changing out. And there's the tone control you can see at the front of the radio there. If I can just figure out how to aim my camera, which I can't. <laughs> okay, that's the guy I'm changing. Okay, got the last capacitor back in. Now, hey, let's let's do a test on it here. Now this one was up above, uh, on above the chassis. I wonder if it took more more moisture or anything like that. I'm not really sure. 
that much difference, but we're going to find out here. upon the beauty of these capacitors too. They can be leaky, but maybe not have any DC pushed across them, like this one. The tone control here may have no DC across it at all, so the leak would probably be quite unimportant. Okay, we're ready to start her up one last time here. Lights. Cameras. Wait a minute, hold on the action. i got to put on my voltmeter there. Okay. We are set. Here we go. Let her rip. I shouldn't really say that, should I? Let her explode. Let her blow to pieces. That's not quite what I want to say. Here we go. Where will it stop this time? Put your money, quick. Put your money on 6.3. 6.2. No, maybe 6.1, not quite. Okay, it's in the ballpark there. Now if you look at our other output indicators, so we're just about exactly three here. The fact that it's off a bit is probably just the volume control. And the signal, of course, looks great. Let's fool with the tone control. I think I left it up high, so it would be passing, it would be uh, uh, not depleting the treble. Let's make it deplete the treble on there, you can see that uh, it's got quite a, quite a strong effect, in fact. So even with this control, I believe, treble all the way up, it looks to me like it could go a little further. Of course, this, uh, what am I saying? This, this control would actually eliminate the capacitor from the circuit when it's turned. All the way one way, would it? I don't know. I'll stop babbling now. I think that's it. I think that's where we've gotten to here. This looks pretty stable now. Doesn't seem to be drifting. So I'll let this run. Oh, it does seem to be coming down. I'm going to let this guy just sit here and run for a while. And, uh, Come back and see what's happened to it. Okay, so I kind of got lost track of what, how much time has gone by. Let's see, it's eh, maybe half an hour's gone by. And this has dropped down to four and a half. Now, question: Is it tuning? What is it? Uh, let's look at the other. Let's look at the other view here for a second. Okay, so this guy's hanging right in there, and we still have a, a nice signal on the scope, no problem. Well, the fact that the ABC is wandering around a little bit probably, probably doesn't really portend anything serious at all. So what I'm gonna, I'm gonna try though, I'm gonna try tuning the radio, just to see if it's drifted off tune here. So here we go. Not really. That's Right about the top there, so it hasn't hasn't drifted off tune at all. I think we can declare this satisfactory. That's what I think. But what we need to do is listen to it, both AM and FM, put it through a nice uh, ear ear based test, and see what we got. But I I really think this guy is working really well at this point. I really do. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed all that. Uh, what was the big discovery here? The big discovery was not much. Uh, the capacitors were kind of moderate, suffering from a little bit of old age, moderate condition, changing them all out, not having a big impact on the radio. Uh, but for sure, this radio is now going to run for years and years and years to come. Or it wasn't going to with those other capacitors in there. So 
Okay, next time you see this radio, I'll just be playing it. I hope. See ya.